Welcome to the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. Honda wants you to think this is more of a truck than some of you thought it was prior. So they've made it look truckier and it works. I actually like the styling tweaks and revisions made to this thing. Sorry, I wanted to see if I could get it sideways there for a second. I like the revisions made to this. The nose is different. The nose is tougher and it, it works. They didn't go over the top. They didn't go super aggressive. They didn't give it angry eyes. You know, they didn't, they didn't dumb it up. They just made it look a little bit tougher and that's okay. That works for the truck space. On the inside, the interior is nice. The dash, the steering wheel, those are new pieces. The seats are super comfortable. Honda always does really good jobs with their seats. These seats are great. This armrest here is wonderful. The steering wheel feels good in your hands everything is easy to reach they put a physical volume knob in it which is very much appreciated honda thank you for doing that now under the hood we have a three and a half liter v6 because it's a honda because of course we do it makes 280 horsepower 262 pound feet of torque and it's backed up by a nine speed automatic gearbox all wheel drive is standard and this honda ridgeline comes with different driving modes i'm gonna hit this button to see what they are we've got normal snow mud and sand I'm in sand right now just for shits and giggles. I don't need to be into anything dramatic. We're not getting into some gnarly stuff, bro. We're not getting pitted, whoop <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. But the driving dynamics of this are great. Yes, it is more car-like than other pickup trucks, but its on-road driving manners are probably the best in the segment. The interior comfort is the best in the segment. On a daily basis, the Ridgeline is the nicest midsize truck to live with. That's just how it is. And for 90% of truck buyers, this is all the truck you knew. How can you say that? I tow stuff every single day. Well, then you need a truck that can do that, and that's fine. The average person who buys a truck probably doesn't do that. You can tell with this though. And in fact, when I borrowed this from Honda, I asked for a trailer and a Talon. So I also have a review coming on that. Stand by for that. I wish I could have spent more time with it, but weather and other activities meant I got a little bit of time out in the desert, but I drove this, I towed with it all the way out to Barstow, about two hours each way, up a grade, down a grade, on the highway. The trailer Honda gave me was actually dog shit. It was a very old trailer, um, but it was fine. It just had a talon on the back. The talon weighs 1,755 pounds with fluids. The trailer probably weighs, you know, I don't know. I don't think it weighs 1,000 pounds. The tow rating on the Ridgeline is 5,000 pounds. So it is less than the competition, but that is understandable based on the unibody underneath this. So it can still tow toys. There's no sway control. The trailer danced once or twice on me, which was so exhilarating, but the engine was fine. I was climbing. I was holding the speeds I wanted to hold and it got the job done. As far as payload, uh, what is the payload number on this? I forget it. I think I want to say 1700 or 1500. Shoot. I forget the payload number. So I'm going to go bam. That's the payload number adequate for putting stuff in the bed. And because of the way this thing is built, the frame, the platform on which it sits, the bed is wide enough that you can flat carry stuff up to four feet wide, which is probably a little bit better than some of the other pickups in this class. So it can still do truck things. It can do them. It just can't do them as truculently as the rest of the trucks. It is not an off-roader. It's fine off-road as long as we're talking about like forest service roads, trails like that. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of articulation. There's not going to be dynamically challenging stuff like this mud pit up here. Let's actually see what happens. I'm going to charge straight through. Now, if you notice when I did that, <laughs> A couple of times I had the wheel turn like this and this, and I kept going straight, which was the direction I wanted to go, so it all worked out, but that was actually also pretty funny. And it's fun to get trucks dirty, even car-based trucks, like the Ridgeline or minivan-based trucks, whichever platform this is running on. I like the looks of it. I like the comfort of it. I like the daily drivability, livability of it. This is a good truck, and if you don't think it is, I mean, just shut up. You know, like, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, 
that's that was mean. I'm gonna back that up. I'm not a mean person because I actually have friends who don't like this and I like them and I like their opinions and they are good opinions. So I'm sorry, that was rude of me. But this is a good truck and it, maybe your needs exceed the needs of this. So you just get, this, so this doesn't work for you. But for 90% of the people out there, I, I really feel like this is the truck for you. Though hopefully this doesn't turn into what happened in my F-250 Tremor video where apparently everybody who is watching that one is a libertarian millionaire ranch owner in Texas. Um, and, and you know, so whatever. <laughs> That's a story for another day. Um, so back to the truck. The base price of these, it's a little higher compared to the competition, though it is nicer and, and it is more comfortable on the inside. So these start around 35,000. There's four trims. This is the base trim with the HPD appearance package. So this as tested is about 37. Now I wanna talk about that appearance package because in general, I like the way it looks. I think the wheels it adds are excellent. Um, it gives a different grill and then it gives the fender flares and at first glance it's like oh those are cool And then you look closer at them. You're like eh. the, the treatment around the gas the fuel filler door is not great I wish they could have done something different there and then this whole package upgrade and you can get it on all four trims It's a twenty eight hundred dollar upcharge. I wish this is HPD give us different springs or a throatier exhaust or like something different tuning that says, okay, I understand why it's $2,800. Yeah, wheels are expensive, but like just, just wheels alone and then some look stuff is not, ooh, we got a mud puddle, is not what I'm after. Um, gotta be careful because I don't know what's in there. Hello. I feel like the HPD package should be more. It shouldn't just be looks. Like I said, some nice set of springs. It'd be awesome if they did like HPD street and HPD off-road because HPD is crushing it off-road right now with like Jeff Proctor's race team racing a Baja Ridgeline, which I've driven and they're side by sides. They're doing, they're doing great stuff, but Honda is also good for street performance. So if they did an HPD street package that maybe uh, stiffened them up and lowered it an inch or something to that effect. And then an HPD off-road package, which made a more progressive set, maybe different shocks. Uh, shocks start to get expensive compared to springs, but give it a little bit of a lift at that point and some chunky tires. That would be cool. Let, let you choose your avenue for upgrading and modification right at the dealer level. That, that would be a lot of fun. As it sits, I almost would not opt for the HPD package, even though I do like those wheels. Um, it, you don't need it. You do not need the HPD package. So, you know, take that for what you will. But the rest of the truck is good. Uh, yeah, steering feels fine. Like I said, on-road manners are great. Um, it's just not going to win any awards off-road, nor if, if you know you're going to be a heavy-duty off-roader. You know, you have the Ford Ranger with the Tremor package. You have, obviously, the Toyota stuff, the ZR2 on the, on the Chevy GM side of things. Um, but it just comes back to 90% of buyers, this is all the truck you need. And I believe that and I stand by that statement for mid-sized buyers. Um, I tow fifth wheels, we'll get a, a super duty. I don't care, then you don't need this truck and I'm not talking to you. You are not 90% of the buyers. I don't understand why this is such a hard concept on the internet to convey sometimes. But you're like, just, just, just quiet this sometimes and use this or these and, and the world will be a better place. I'm frustrated because now I'm thinking of that F250 video, F250, uh, F250 video. Mud, slinging mud. I'm gonna have to wash this after this, uh, or whatever. It's fun. It's fun to, to have a reason to need to wash this. I haven't even shot the exterior, so the exterior is gonna be a dirty. So, to sum up, to stop ranting, and to stop insulting some of you viewers, this is a good truck. The redesign added a little bit of toughness to the exterior, which I appreciate without going over the top and, and trying to sell you something that this isn't. If you know what this is and you know what you need, this is a good truck. I, I, I like it a lot. I mean, it's a Honda product. It's gonna run forever. It drives nicely. It's comfortable. It's well-made. What more can you ask for? No, you can't jump it. I wouldn't. I mean, I would, but it's not my truck, and if I give it back broken, that's that doesn't look too good on me. 
That's why you tow the, the talent to the desert and you send it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. Welcome to an all new tougher Honda Ridgeline experience. Yes, this is the new Ridgeline and it's holding gears because I put it in sport. Let's not do that. Beep, try again.